it's been an interesting week because I don't know if, if, if confidence about the Bears has ever been higher. And then you wake up on Monday and the Bears are in last place because how good the NFC North is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you, you feel really good going into your bye and you don't feel quite as good coming out. Um, well, but I mean, bottom line, obviously the division is really good. So there's a lot to be determined yet. You're sitting in great shape if you're the Bears. Um, so you, you feel good about where you're at right now, and you know that everything is in front of you. If you want to accomplish something in the division, those games are out in front of you, and it's going to be fun to see uh, to see how it plays out because you got four really good teams. How has Jared Goff um, ascended to the level of play he's at, um, especially against the Blitz? The numbers against the 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 Blitz from Brian Flores are just are just amazing. Kurt, your thoughts on the way that he's playing right now? He's playing great. I love their system. Their system makes sense, um, I just think, from a quarterback perspective. But he fits into it very well, the throws that they ask him to make. And one thing he's doing really, really well is uh, he, he's getting it to his his checkdowns. So, you know, when things kind of fall apart or, or squeeze uh, the pocket, he knows right where his checkdowns are. He's making positive plays, and he's keeping things moving forward. So been in the system for a couple years. It fits them really well. They've got playmakers all over the place, and they've really kind of come into their own in terms of how they're using all their different guys. But, I mean, the one-two punch in the backfield, um, you know, they got weapons all over on the outside, uh, specifically with Williams and, and um, Amon Ra. And so uh, it's great. Laporta at the tight end. So they just have guys all over the place, and so they fit together really, really well. They play fast. They define the looks for him, and uh, and he's a really good quarterback when he's in that mode and when he, you, you're not rushing him through the process. And and right now, uh, they're playing well, and he's playing great. And are you a believer in, in what we've seen from Sam Darnold? He was real good yesterday, missed a big throw late that might have put the game away, but it's been a great year of resurgence for him. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really like Sam, uh, you know, that – the system is set up a particular way that um, that lends itself to, I think, some of the success that he's had. Uh, I think we're going to see more and more down the stretch that it's probably going to fall on him a little more more than the system. Um, and we'll get a chance to, to see, you know, where he's at and, and can he continually make those decisions. I, I thought Detroit did a nice job yesterday of, uh, you know, kind of forcing him to hold the football um, and then try to make something happen or – you know, have to scramble a little bit, but he's playing really well. He's a gifted thrower. You know that. So if he can see the things in front of him and he just has to throw the football, then I think we'll continue to see good football. If teams force him to have to work through his progressions and make reads, we're going to get a chance to see where he's at at this stage, um, at this stage in his career. And, and we'll get a chance to see how good he really is. I want to go back to golf for a second because I'm, I'm fascinated by – his career arc. When you go back to when the trade took place, there are a lot of people who thought, and maybe even people at the, at the Lions that thought, he's here for a little bit, we'll draft a quarterback in a couple of years, and then we'll be on our way. I'd love to know from your perspective, how do you think he's different as the Lions quarterback than he was as the Rams quarterback? And what does that say about us making judgment on quarterbacks before they're fully cooked? Well, uh, yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is, you know, he's gotten better. He's gotten more comfortable, as most quarterbacks do, as they spend more time in the league. Um, but I think you saw a really good Jared Goff in L.A. as well. And, you know, a guy that took him to the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, I still – there's still questions out there that if Jared Goff has to win games with his right arm. So if they can't run the football and they've got to spread it out and he's got to throw it 40 times – there's still questions on whether he can be that guy. And, you know, the bottom line in this league, I say it all the time, there's a handful of those guys, you know, those guys that I consider franchise guys, guys that can carry you uh, if you have to throw it every game, every time out, uh, that they're going to win a lot of games for you with their right arm. And you, they're not going to continually hurt you or, or be a detriment to your team if you're in that mode. Now, Jared has never been great in that mode. So you may not put him in that elite category, but he's right below that. And when he's got a team and a system that fits him, 
when they were good going good in LA, it was a run first, play action type team. Uh, he's really good at the throws down the field. I think he's better at throws down the field than, you know, kind of dinking and dunking and, uh, you know, playing that quick game. And so if you can play in that mold, he's always been really good. And he's still really good. And now they may have a better system for him and more and better players around him. And then they've got the complement of that run game. Um, I just, I think this is who he is. And I think the problem was, you know, he wasn't, you know, quarterback A, like I mentioned. So, you know, the Rams were able to go out and get a quarterback A in Matthew Stafford that can carry your team with his right arm and they won a championship with him. So it worked out for them. But I don't think it was ever because Jared Goff was not a good starting NFL quarterback. He is, and he's one of the best in the league and he has been for a while. It was just a matter of we had a chance to get somebody that was maybe a, a touch better in terms of, Whatever we needed in a game, he could carry us because that was, you know, some of the questions specifically in L.A. when they went through the playoff run and um, and they were forced to play away from their strength and Jared really couldn't carry him. So they went out and got a guy that they thought could because that guy was available. Um, but Jared Goff is, is who he is, and he's really, really good at what he is. Um, and I just think it's so unfortunate that too often in this game we um, – we fall in love with just all the tangible stuff, how fast you run, how many guys you can make miss, how hard you throw the football. And we don't often really appreciate playing the game. And he plays the game. And he's not the most athletic. He doesn't have the biggest arm. But he plays the game. And if you play the game, you give your team a chance every time you play. And that's who Jared Goff is. And that's who a lot of quarterbacks – you know, the, the guys that are kind of that notch below, they're that kind of quarterback that can play the game and they play it well and they give their team a chance. And so I just think it's it's unfortunate because we do have greater athletes at the quarterback spot now than we ever have. And so everybody wants that guy, but not every one of those guys can, you know, couple that with playing the position. And if you can't, do you want that guy that can't really play the position, but he can do all the amazing things? Or do you want a Jared Goff that can play the position, but can't do all the amazing things? The answer to me is always clear. You take the guy that can play the game if you can't get all of it, if you can't have all of it. And there's not many guys that are Josh Allen's and Patrick Mahomes and uh, Lamar Jackson's. There's not many of those guys out there. So we keep trying to find them, but you know these organizations realize, oh, He's not that guy. He's not that guy. He's not that. So find a guy that can play um, and you're going to give yourself a chance. Um, you know, and that to me is is the bottom line around the league that we continue to see these teams that are banking on the guys being the next Patrick Mahomes. They're struggling because most guys aren't those guys. And it's hard to win in spite of not being able to play the position. Whereas, like I said, you play the position, you give your team a chance, even if you can't carry them, you know, with your athleticism or with your big arm or with your, your special plays, you give your team a chance. And that's what Jared Goff did in LA. And it's exactly what he's doing now in Detroit. Well, uh, that, that's a really interesting mindset. So uh, apply that mindset to last night's game and Russell Wilson and Justin Fields in any way that you want. Uh, you, what is your analysis of like the way that those guys have performed and how Russ was last night? Well, I'm, here's the thing is I think they're basically the same guy at this point in their careers, other than the fact that Justin's, you know, more athletic now than, uh, than Russell is. But in terms of how they play the game, you know, the, the big conversation, you know, even Justin came out and said, you know, if I would have played uh, better, if I would have played really good football, I wouldn't have lost the job. And so when you go back and watch him play, it's a lot of the same stuff you saw in Chicago, that he's a playmaker. He's going to make some special plays for you during the game, but he doesn't see everything and he doesn't make all the plays that are out there in front of him. And um, you know, what he was doing better this year, I thought, than in Chicago, though, was he was managing games better. He wasn't always trying to make the big play. He was willing to check it down. But sometimes that came at the, 
uh, expense of, of making plays that were there to be made. And I think that's what Coach Tomlin was saying. And that's what Justin was saying, that when you watch it, you know, let's not, you know, let's not confuse um, playing winning football with playing great football. And, you know, I think he said that about Justin. And, and that's kind of what you saw on film was that they were finding ways to win. And it was on other things in the playmaking of Justin, but it wasn't because he was playing great football with what was out in front of him. So insert Russell Wilson. That to me is who Russell Wilson has been the last couple of years is he's not playing great football. He's not seeing the field. He's not making those decisions that Justin wasn't making. He hadn't been doing that the last couple of years. And so he was very similar in, in who he was. And last night, if you go and watch the film, Russell was not asked to make but maybe one decision in the whole game. And what I mean by that is a lot of the throws, you come off a naked bootleg where you don't really, you know, it's not really a read. It's just kind of right out in front of you. Or there were a lot of throws against man coverage where it was just one-on-one, -on -one, man coverage, drop back and throw it. And so it wasn't a true indication to me of is Russell a better quarterback than Justin is right now, simply because I hadn't seen it the last couple of years. And so until I see him see it and play and do the things that Justin wasn't doing, I still reserve myself to go, I think they're very similar quarterbacks. Um, but it worked out very much in his favor last night that he got a lot of great one-on-one -on -one matchups. He's a good thrower in those one-on-one -on -one situations and putting the ball up. And he had some guys make plays for him. And that was really the difference. Um, but I'm reserving, you know, my analysis of these two guys and and who's the better quarterback right now until I see a little different situation for Russell to have to play through. Our segment with Kerr Warner is sponsored by Busey Bank, building business, growing wealth since 1868, and by Plumbers 911. Plumbing emergency? Call the plumbing professionals available 24-7 at 1-833-PLUM-911. Kurt, what do you hope Caleb Williams self-scouted during the bye week? Um, I mean, I, you know, I, I think it's seeing the progress that he's made throughout the year, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing to me is I want him to continue to get more comfortable with what they're doing, uh, more comfortable with his reads and, and, and be more definitive with those things. Um, but I've, if there's one thing, you know, the self-scouting that I've talked about a number of times here is just continually working to get his eyes in the right spot to start the down. Um, and that's really understanding each play and understanding what am, where do I want my initial read to be and what am I looking at that forces me to go away from that read and go to something else. That to me is kind of the, the, to simplify, you know, what I'm talking about is – you know, am I looking for, you know, a middle O's, middle open defense or a middle closed defense? Am I looking at is the corner off or is the corner rolled in this situation? Am I trying to, to decipher in the first two steps of my drop or when I get the ball, is it man or is it zone? Like those are the things um, that you want to be able to connect with each play and identify so you know right where your eyes need to be and you can process quickly you can make the read that's in front of you or you can progress through things. So that to me would be the biggest thing. Comfort in the offense, still as a rookie, continuing to learn it, continuing to understand the base offense that you're going to have every week and get good with that. And then, you know, if you're self-scouting, if you're watching film, always checking that box. Did my eyes start in the right spot? Why did they not or why did they start in the right spot? Did I get lucky or did I know exactly what I was looking at on this particular play, because that always, again, talking about giving quarterbacks a chance, that always gives you a chance. If you understand why we're running this concept and what this concept attacks, you need to have your eyes in the right spot right off the bat, and you can play the game faster and more efficiently. And so that's that, that's kind of what I would do. Hmm. Good stuff from Kurt Warner here on Spiegel and Holmes. All right, let me ask you, Kurt, if you were going to be benched, okay, if you're a starting quarterback and they were going to bench you, would you rather have it happen slowly during the course of a week with no one necessarily announces the starter, but then comes Sunday night and it's, it becomes the other guy. Would you rather have them seemingly maybe invent an injury that you already played through, but now they're just going to sit you down for the next four to six weeks, apparently all of a sudden, 
Would you rather be replaced in the fourth quarter as your coach says he was looking for a spark? And then you got to answer to that one. So I know it's three different situations, <laughs> completely random. None of them ripped from the current NFL headlines. But wh which would you rather have, Kurt? Well, I definitely don't want somebody making up an injury if that's uh, something that, that is out there. I would definitely not want that. Um, you know, I mean, the other two scenarios, like, you know, I'm assuming you're leaning towards Daniel Jones and what happened with New York. Yeah, Daniel you Jones know, Daniel Jones got pulled, and Brian Dayball said he was just looking yeah. for a spark, and Jones is left well, to tell the media he doesn't like it and wondering if he could have communicated well, right. more, you know? Well, I mean, yeah, and that happens. Like, sometimes you're just not on your A game or, or the team. You know, like, the bottom line is we can't pull out everybody, and that's, I think, the bummer of those kind of situations. Like, we can't go – hey, I'm pulling out the left side of the offensive line and we're going to throw in two new guys <laughs> and we're going to try to get a spark. Like, you don't do that. The only guy you pull out is the quarterback. And so it's unfortunate when your team's playing bad and then you pull your quarterback to see if maybe the other guy can, can do something. Um, you know, then it looks like, oh, he was terrible. Is he going to get his job back? You know, where, you know, you could do that with a lot of guys. You just happen to do it with your quarterback. And, you know, probably in – the greatest thing in his defense is they looked worse once he got out than they did when he was in there. And that wasn't very good at that time, but they looked bad, um, you know, when they pulled him. Um, so, you know, that stuff happens. Nobody likes it. You want to go down, you want to go down fighting with your guys. You understand when things aren't going well, or even when you're not playing well, but I want to go down swinging knowing, Hey, it's a bad game. I'll come back and bounce back the next week. Um, you know, the other one, I usually believe that if you're in the building, even if they haven't made a decision yet, you kind of know what the decision is. And, you know, you, you understand it or you see the writing on the wall, if that's the case. Um, and you understand that, hey, they're just trying to prolong this thing to, um, you know, to not tell anybody. And so the other team has to try to figure out who's going to start or, you know, or, or maybe they're just playing out just to see and make sure you know, again, assuming this is kind of the fields one, you know, assuming that Russell is healthy, let's give him the reps. We think he's going to be the starter, but let's make sure the calf is healthy. Let's make sure he plays well this week and he's not too rusty. And so you can let it play out, even though you kind of understand that, which again is, is not always the most fun. Um, but I, I think in most situations, I think Justin's point is very valid. Had Justin played really, really good football, I don't believe that Russell Wilson would have been put in there. I think the reason he was put in there is because they saw there was a lot of opportunities left on the football field. And as a player, you know, you have to, you know, be honest with yourself in those situations. You can say, hey, we're four and two. Hey, why am I losing my job? But you can also ask the question, are we four and two because of me? You know, that could we be better? Could the offense be better? Should we have blown people out? Should we be five and one? You know, like you can ask those questions. And I think it's always important to be honest with yourself so you can get better and you can truly assess a situation um, and really whether you should be playing or not. Um, that, you know, that, uh, you know, I've always said in this business, all I wanted was an opportunity to compete. Give me an opportunity to compete, and if I'm the best guy, I should be playing. If I'm not the best guy, then I shouldn't be playing, no matter if we're winning or no matter if, you know, what. It doesn't matter what. If I'm not the best guy, I shouldn't be playing, and another guy should get that opportunity. It's not always fun, but you have to be honest with yourself one way or another. Um, and if you can honestly look at it and go, I understand why. I understand why I'm not playing, that I didn't do a good enough job, then it's hard to look at everybody else and go, well, but I still should be playing because we're four and two, instead of saying, you know, I should have done more. I could have played better and I didn't. And I left this door open. Doesn't mean it's the right decision. Doesn't mean Russell Wilson's better, but I left the door open being the fact that he didn't look like he was the starter going in before Russell got hurt. I left the door open for them to go back to that guy, the starter from before. And that's as much on me as anything.